know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Okay, ever heard of it? Yes. That last part I always refer to as the athlete's verse. Like every... Like, I think my wife had that, like, in, like, sewn into her softball glove. Um, yes, my wife played softball, guys, okay? <laughs> I played field hockey. We, the signs were there. You know, the signs were there. I don't know why I didn't come out until I was 30. Anyways, um, that's about me. Um, <laughs> but about the Bible, um, I've been going back to this passage uh, recently because it's, you know, you have those uh, passages where you're like, this, this meant a lot to me at a certain time of my life, and now I'm different, and then this actually still means a lot to me um, in a different way. Um, and that's one of these passages for me. This passage is still incredibly important to me. I feel like there was a lot of time in my life where I just got to the end, you know, and I was just like, yeah, I can do anything um, because I have Christ. And... I can win games, and I can ace a test I didn't study for. You know what I mean? It was very like, hey, remember Philippians 4.13? I don't need to prepare at all for life. Um, but now there's this beautiful journey, right? And the beginning part of that passage, you know, whatever is true and whatever is good and whatever is lovely and whatever is praiseworthy to think about these things. There's two things that stick out to me in this passage of Scripture. And one is that there is uh, intention setting on focusing on things that are good and lovely and beautiful and praiseworthy and noble. And the second is that we eventually get to this point where it's, I can do all things, I could do anything, I could hold all the things, but that actually comes through this juxtaposition of knowing how to find contentment when you are hungry or well-fed, when you are in need or have plenty. There is this very both and. What allows us to be able to do all things through Christ, what allows us to be able to hold all these things is actually this both and. It's a setting intention of focusing on these pure and lovely things, and it's the ability to recognize that you're going to be in need, that you're going to be hungry, that suffering is a part of being human. And it's this very beautiful idea to me because this week was really, really hard. This week was kind of awful. This week was terrible for a lot of people. And there's a lot of different elements that, we experience a tragedy or a war or something. We experience it differently than we would have however many years ago, right? We've got the internet. We've got 24-hour news cycles. We've got all sorts of things um, that I don't know lead us to the best way to sit with our grief. Um, and that's how I felt this week. I felt like I saw something really terrible, and then I saw another thing, but then I saw another hot take about it. But then I saw someone telling me I should feel some type of way about it. And then someone was telling me I should feel a different type of way about it. And someone was saying, if you feel this type of way about it, you actually don't care about people. If you feel this type of way about it, you hate people. If you feel this type of way about it. And I was like, I am, I don't know. Right? I don't know. And I got to a point where I was like struggling so much. And I was like telling my wife, I'm like, I feel so far out of my depth. I, I am so far out of my depth of understanding. All I know is that I, I'm sad. And I was like, I think I need to delete social media and just be sad. Um, sad that I don't understand everything, sad that people are hurting, sad that people have died, and that's all I know at this moment. And I think I need to sit with that grief. So this is just a note, get rid of the apps, just for like a day. That's not the point of a sermon could be over then. Everybody get, get the apps out. Um, I don't know that the hot take you're looking for is going to be on Twitter. I could just tell you right now, I don't know if that's going to lead you to sitting with the grief of what it means to be a human. But it had this, this I had this experience, um, and it felt similar, not unlike experiences I've had before, right, where uh, there are things in our world that sometimes keep us from truly allowing to sit with our own feelings and our own experiences and our own grief. And I think there is something to educating yourself and finding resources, um, and I've been trying to do that in a way that is, has boundaries of like, I'm like, I could read one thing a day, I could do, all. anyways, this is, that's what I'm doing, that's not what you have to do, but... There's something to the fact that this is a week where suffering was all around. It was visible. And I think a lot of us had a hard time being able to 
sit with the grief because we live in a world that moves fast. And information comes fast. And information feels opposite. And I was telling my wife, it, it, it reminded me of a season when a few years ago, um, when George Floyd's murder was found guilty, I remember this, it was the oddest reaction I thought I would have because immediately I said, I need to say something about this online, which is kind of insane. <laughs> um, and so I opened up Instagram, I was like, guilty, praise hand emoji, but then I was like, oh, should I be saying something else? Is that insensitive? So then I go to pages of people that I admire, and I was like, what are they saying? And they're like, oh, we shouldn't be happy. Like, he should be still alive. I was like, okay, yeah, I shouldn't feel good. And then another page was like, it's okay to feel good because this is, like, the accountability we need. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it's okay for me to feel good. It's accountability we need. And then I go another page of someone I like, and then they were like, no, it's this isn't accountability. This is, like, this isn't justice. This is accountability. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's right. Um... <laughs> Until I told my wife, I was like, I think I just want to cry. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I think I just need to, to be with my own human emotions um, about this before I get the hot take of our chiropractor, you know, who was also <laughs> posting about it. Like, when you really step back, you're like, whoa. <laughs> um, anyways, all that to say, this was a week that was just a reminder to me of the fact that suffering is a part of being human. Um, that there will, all, there will be difficult things like Corey said, we're, we're experiencing these global things, and that hasn't even gotten into what we're all going through in our own lives. Um, the difficult conversations we've had, the relationships, all of these things, that is a part of being human. And what I love about this verse is it's saying, those things will happen. We will always experience pain and suffering. We will be on this journey of knowing how to do it. And if we want to be able to do it all, if we want to be able to move through the suffering and the grief and the pain, then we also have to let the levity in and the noble and the beautiful and the lovely. And those things actually don't diminish each other or count each other out. And I think that is a little bit of a misnomer in our minds, what sometimes keep us addicted to these things. And we feel like we, we can't let the levity in, which is not how we do it all. The only reason, the only way that we're going to be able to hold all these things that humanity has brought us, the only way that we're going to be able to be fully human and have all this diversity and nuance of experiences, if we let it all in. I had a mentor tell me one time that changed my entire life as like a strong Enneagram 7 she said, you can only experience joy to the depth at which you're willing to experience pain because they come from the same well. You cut one off, you cut them both off. You cut off the pain, you cut off the joy. You cut off the joy, you cut off the pain. And this morning, I just wanted to have a conversation about those realities that it's okay to let the levity in. That does not take away from the suffering. I'm a firm believer of one thing, and that is nothing in the world can unite a room like a fart. Um... <laughs> Truly nothing. And I remember my wife and I, we, um, it was when we were just dating and we were having like one of our first fights, you know, which is like even scarier because you're like, you know, what's happening? How do we fight? How do you fight? What am, how do I fight, you know? Um, and it got to this point where, you know, when you're arguing with someone where you kind of just decide, like, I actually don't, it doesn't matter what you say next. I'm already mad, so I'm going to stay mad. <laughs> like, even if you start to make sense. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm mad now. I'm in my mad s season. Um, and so we're, I mean, we're just, we're either going to keep going or we're going to stop or we're going to circle back because I'm, I'm not giving up. And you're not giving up. I'm married to a Scorpio. Okay, so um, <laughs> at the time I had an 80-pound dog. Uh, he was a boxer named Doug. And um, so we're arguing, and we're, like, arguing, and we're just going back and forth. We're not getting anywhere, and I just feel so tense. Like, my whole body is tense. We're both tense. And Doug just walks by, and he lets one rip just <laughs> right in front of us. And it's, like, bad, and it's smelly. And, and you know that moment where you're like, mm, I don't want to laugh because I'm being angry right now, <laughs> but... I have to, and we laughed, and we let the levity in, and we kept talking and had whatever conversations we need, but that's what I feel like sometimes, right? I feel like we get so into just ugh, the feelings of it all and the, and the pain and the anger and all of these things and these moments of lovely and pure and praiseworthy, and they come by and we don't let them in because we're so secure in our space. And all I'm saying is that letting those moments in does not take away, it does not diminish the suffering. It allows us to do it all. 
That's the only way we'll be able to keep going. I remember one of the, the saddest days I think I've ever had in my life. My grandparents had 10 kids. Uh, my mom's one of 10. And the matriarch of our family was my grandmother. And she passed away. I was 20 years old. And her funeral was like, you know, it was, it was beautiful, but it was, it was just hard. It was a, one of the hardest days. And there's, you know, she has 10 kids. So there's like a million people there. And um, all my cousins and aunts and uncles, and we're all grieving. And I have this little cousin, and um, he was probably four at the time. Um, and he's autistic. He had a bunch of, like, toy cars with him. And so we're at the funeral, and um, they're, we're at the part where they're putting the casket in the ground. And, and we're all just losing it because we're like this, you know, there was this overwhelming sense of, like, our family will never be the same. My life will never be the same. I remember I had this just feeling because my grandmother was such a, a she felt even though I don't believe that some of us are more connected to God than others, but I do feel like she was, you know. And I was like, who's going to pray for me now? And, you know, there's just so many things that we're all, I mean, I, just a pain like I had never felt, um, a grief I had never felt. And as the cassette's going down, my cousin had kind of wiggled away from his parents and just launched like a, a toy monster truck into the, into the, <laughs> thing that had now been low lowered down a good amount. So it was, you know, like it took a, it, it, it was, a, we all saw it, but it was a good time before we like, doop, like it was, it was a long, a long way down for that truck. Um, and we all kind of looked at each other like, <laughs> this is the saddest day of most of our lives. But that was funny. And so, um, <laughs> can we do that? And I'll never forget, I will never forget what it felt like to have one of the hardest laughs I've ever had during one of my biggest cries. Like, it was just, I was like, oh my God, if I, I'm alive. Um, <clears throat> this is what it's like to be human. And I could go on and on and on, right? This has been my, you know, some of us, I think, in this room, um, maybe lean towards the side of everything negative, and some of us in this room lean on the side of like, I'm not looking over there, I'm only focusing on <laughs> what's good and what's all these things, and the, the best that we could do as humans, the only way that we'll be able to actually hold it all is to take the lid off the well and to do both. To say, I'm gonna actually set intention and attention around finding things that are lovely and pure and good and noble. And when the levity comes my way, it doesn't matter how firmly my feet are planted in the angry sand or the grief sand, I'm going to let it in. Because one thing I can guarantee you, it does not last forever, the grief or the joy. We laughed, and then we went back to crying. You cry, and eventually you'll go back to laughing. But what our life is going to do endlessly is offer us opportunity for both, and we have to be willing to take them. Part of my grief this past week has been looking around at a world that I felt like was taking me only into the bad and the bad and the bad and the bad and the worse. And not that those things need to be ignored, but there are also lovely things. We had the opportunity this week, my wife and I drove up to the Redwoods north of San Francisco. And we were just like staring at trees, you know? And we were like, what is life? These trees are so good and beautiful. And life is hard. And I think that's the answer. The answer is not, here's, here's 10 things, 10 ways you could do to change your life and never be sad again. The answer is not, here's uh, 10 reasons why we're all screwed forever. Um, the answer is yes. Yes to the grief. Yes to the joy. To know what it is to have need. To know what it is to be in abundance to let the levity in when it comes because it won't be there forever, to acknowledge the suffering when it comes because that's also not gonna be there forever, to get to a place where we allow ourselves to stand firm and confident that we could do all things through Christ is to know both of those, is to let both of those in. And I think that's really beautiful and it's also really hard. It's hard to see lovely on a rainy day. 
it's hard sometimes to see suffering when you're like, I just want everything to be good. But we have to see them both. We have to hold them both. If we want to be able to do it all, to hold it all, to live in this thing, we got to do it both. So this week, my challenge to us, there is grief. There is suffering. Um, there are things to be paid attention to. And my challenge is that we also find ways to set intention um, around letting the levity in, around the lovely things and the beautiful things. I promise they won't diminish the suffering, and I promise they won't last forever. Maybe you need to delete the apps. I talked to a friend um, a couple weeks ago who has had a long-term on and off relationship with some really dark thoughts. And he said, can I just read to you a list I have of reasons why I like being here that I, that I come back to? And I was like, yes. Um, and it was so beautiful. And some of it was deep and personal, and some of it was so silly. Like, some of it was just, I'm like, that is a nice thing, right? That is a great thing when In-N-Out actually gets your order right and the fries are hot. And, <laughs> yeah, that's something lovely, okay? Um, there's a reason we do good news every week. There's a reason I feel so present during good news. We got to let it in. We got to look for it. We have to set intention around finding it. Finding it because having a balance is the only way we're going to make it. So if it's a gratitude list, if it's just setting intention, if it's looking around, if it's just deleting one app for one day, I swear to God, it, I, your mental health will skyrocket. Um, and that should really tell us something. I'm like, why don't I delete them forever? Because <laughs> I'm addicted. Okay, that's a different problem, <laughs> a different sermon. But holding both. Um, so, yeah, that's actually the end. Um, so you are going to grab the same three or four people around you and answer this question. What is one lovely thing you can prioritize?